Hello, Newtonius Minimus here to welcome you to the second in a series of five on motion physics, Newton's Three Laws. Newton's pendulum experiments with colliding objects and calculating precise masses and accelerations led him to develop three laws of motion. The first law of motion, inertia. All objects in motion will stay in motion forever unless acted upon by an outside force like friction, or objects not in motion will stay still forever unless acted upon by an outside force. And the more mass an object has, the more inertia it has, which is why an object with much larger mass is slower to get going and slower to stop. Second law, force equals mass times acceleration, or F equals MA. But why not MV? Doesn't it seem like speed would matter? Why is it MA with acceleration and not MV with velocity? This can be easily illustrated by a thought experiment. Let's have a bat traveling in the same direction as a ball. And the bat is going only slightly faster than the ball when it strikes the ball. Do you see that the ball won't be struck with near as much force as a ball flying into the bat traveling in the opposite direction? What you get here is a much more forceful hit, and that's because the ball decelerated severely by changing its direction when it hit, and that's acceleration causing that bigger force, not speed. Third law, the momentum of a closed system is conserved. An example on this third law is that the momentum before an impact equals the momentum after the impact, or the momentum of rocket fuel going out a rocket equals the momentum of the rocket moving out to space, and momentum is mass times velocity. Thus, its units are kilogram meters per second. Many very intricate math problems can be generated from these laws. How much force does this ant need to move the cart of cherries if the weight of the cart, or let's say the pull of the cart, is three-tenths of a newton? Newtons are kilogram meters per second squared because they're a mass being accelerated. So, since the cart pulls back with three-tenths of a newton, it will take the ant three-tenths of a newton of force to pull it. How much is this subject ant accelerated if the queen ant yanks him with a force of three-tenths of a newton? and his mass is one-tenth of a kilogram. Since F equals MA, we first write the formula, then fill in the numbers where they go. F is three-tenths of a newton, the mass is one-tenth of a kilogram, and we're looking for A, so we leave it as A. We divide both sides of the equal sign by one-tenth. On the right side, one-tenth divided by one-tenth cancels out, and on the left side, three-tenths divided by one-tenth equals three, so it's three meters per second squared. Now we've got two astronauts. If both men have the same mass, their velocities when they push away from each other will also be equal. But now let's double the mass of one of them. Let's say the lighter one has a mass of 30 kilograms and the other one after adding the extra mass is 60 kilograms. He pushes away at two meters per second. How fast must the other one move away if momentum is conserved? So we set this up with the formula mv before equals mv after. We know that 60 kilograms times 2 meters per second equals 120 kilogram meters per second. On the other side, we have the mass of 30 kilograms times velocity. Since we don't know his velocity, we have to divide by 30 on both sides of the equal sign. Since 120 divided by 30 is 4, that means the man with half the mass moved away at 4 meters per second, or double the other's speed. Momentum is conserved. Burr.